This week on The Wire, 30% of Perth suburbs rise, housing shortage to lift prices, and interest-only loans get easier. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth, and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, investment, and more. Now please like, comment, and share this video, and if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Now, our top story for this week, 30% of Perth suburbs rise. So the Perth recovery is back on track, having paused in the lead up to the federal election. So sales activity is solid to strong in many locations and some areas have even had price growth. So spring survey price trends are showing that close to 30% of Perth suburbs have had growth in their medians in the past year. The list of places with rising prices is dominated by top end markets and upper middle markets, i.e. locations with medians above $700,000. Now Mount Pleasant, which has stood out in a number of recent surveys, continues to be the market leader with its median house price rising 14% to 1.25 million in the past year. This suburb is part of the Melville local government area, which has been and remains one of the most solid precincts in the Perth market. Also, another emerging feature in the Perth market is the number of suburbs with medians lower than a year ago, but with growth in the latest quarter, and this provides further evidence of a revival. Most of the locations exhibiting that trend are at the affordable end of the market. So examples include places like Two Rocks in the Wanneroo local government area, median of 370,000, down 3% in annual terms, but up 2% in the latest quarter. And Huntingdale, median of 375,000, down 1% in annual terms, but up 1% in the latest quarter. So the recovery in the Perth market after several down years has been primarily dominated by four municipalities. So we're talking Joondalup, Stirling, Wanneroo and Melville and Honspotting Spring Survey confirms that this is still the case. So some great news for the Perth market. Next up, housing shortage to lift prices. So an impending housing shortage caused by the construction downturn will force up property prices. And that comes from market analysts. Residential construction activity for both apartments and houses has been falling faster than expected by the Reserve Bank. The central bank is forecasting a further 7% fall in dwelling investment over the next year. Now, RBA Deputy Governor Guy de Bell says, given the large size of the pipeline, we had expected construction activity to remain at pretty high levels for most of this year. But it turned down sooner and by more than we had expected. Now, major developer Stockland is stepping up the pace of development to meet a housing shortage it says will become apparent next year as a result of stronger investor and retirement living markets that are overlapping with a fall in new housing starts. According to Stockland, signs of a shortage are becoming apparent in Sydney and Brisbane already. So more signs of what's to come. And now for our final story of the week, interest only loans to get easier. So Westpac will allow property investors to take out interest-only loans with smaller deposits than it previously demanded under tightened regulations. Westpac is raising the maximum loan-to-valuation ratio for interest-only loans to property investors from 80% to 90%. This has Westpac joining ANZ, which implemented a similar change earlier this year. When interest-only lending surged to almost 40% of all outstanding housing credit in 2015, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority intervened by placing lending restrictions on the banks. Concerned about lending standards being eroded, APRA capped the portion of new interest-only lending in early 2017, prompting banks to raise interest rates and introduce tougher credit policies. Then as house prices fell, APRA relaxed its policies and now the banks are following suit. So in other good news for investors, banks have also cut their interest rates for interest-only customers by more than rates on other types of mortgages. So once again, some really great news there for investors. Well, look guys, that's pretty much it from me. Now remember to like, comment, and share this video, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Also, don't forget to stay tuned early next week for our Just Ask Tim video series. And if you want to submit a question or there's a topic that you'd like me to discuss in more detail, there's a link in the post to do that. Apart from that, guys, have a great week. And remember, there's only one thing in life that makes a difference. Action. See ya.